All right, guys, welcome back to the greatest game show on this side of the internet where you have to defend takes you may or may not believe in. Today on Defend the Take, we have Dave DeFore and Zach Harper, and we are talking about the Utah Jazz. And um, the way this game show works, as always, each of you guys will get to defend the pro or the con side of three different takes. You'll have 60 seconds to defend your take uninterrupted. Then the other person will go. And then you guys will have an open debate trying to convince me why you are correct. Uh, that being said, the three takes today, guys, is number one, the Utah Jazz will make the playoffs this season. Number two, Laurie Markkinen and Colin Sexton can be the second and third best player on a championship team. And number three, if Nikola Jokic was on the Utah Jazz, they would be better than the current Denver Nuggets team with Jokic. That being said, to decide who gets the pro and who gets the con side, as always, we have a trivia question. And today's trivia question is based off the state of Utah. Zach, out of the U.S., how many states begin with the letter U? One. It's one. It's one. But that's not the yeah. trivia question. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Question one. I, yeah. But what if it was? The <laughs> trivia question today is, how many countries, according to A to Z animals.com, begin with the letter U? And you, you're you trying to get as close as you can without going over. So Without Zach's going over. Again. Without going over. Without going over. Zach, since you are the host, you get to go first. What is your guess? Or guest, I guess. Seven. Seven. Okay. Dave, what is your guess? I'm going to keep it low because I... I Dave, it does like, not matter because without... seven is the exact number. Damn! Oh, seven is the exact number. Damn. Zach, I'm going to give you a point for getting an exact Wow. Number. Zach, do you want the pro side or the con side to all of these arguments? Ooh, I want the pro side. I'll be positive. It's okay, so much more it. fun, too. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, you thought Jazz yeah. Pro here. Oh, Jazz fans <laughs> are going to love me. Um, so that being said, the first take again, guys, is the Utah Jazz will make the NBA playoffs this year. Zach, your 60 seconds starts now. Are you kidding me? Of course they're going to make the playoffs this year. One, they're absolutely going to make the play-in tournament because they have to beat out the Warriors and they have to beat out the Lakers and the Rockets. Like two of those teams, they got to beat out to do that. Those teams are all extremely flawed. The Jazz are on fire. They have found their double rotation, their starters and their second unit. It is 48 minutes of hell facing this Jazz team under Will Hardy. They're good on offense. They're good defensively. They have all this momentum. And then once they get in the play-in tournament, you think you're going to beat Lowry Markkinen? On a, on a single game elimination? Absolutely not. I think they go in as the 10, they beat the nine, they go in there and beat whoever loses from seven, eight. And guess what? They are gonna take the one seed to seven games. That like it's it's a no brainer that the Utah Jazz make the playoffs. They are on fire. This isn't last year where they send off some veterans. Mike Conley gets traded, and all of a sudden they're done and they fall apart. No, they're building now. They had their bad part at the beginning of the season. This team is easily going to make the playoffs. I don't even think it's up for debate. I, Dave shouldn't even respond to this. Time, time, time. Dave, you're 60 seconds. Can I real quick ask for a clarification? Do we mean make the playoffs as in top six at the end of the season or make the playoffs as in make the play in, win a play in game? And make, make the, the play in, win the play in. Okay. In Just wanted to clarify here because, you know, I know this game can can choose to be pedantic when it wants to. I just think the premise of this is a little bit far-fetched. This is a good story. Great coach. Will Hardy really just coaching his tail off. Fun team. Colin Sexton having a career season. Lowry Markin and excellent. They're likely to make the play-in. But that 7-8 battle, whoever it is, is going to be two better teams than, than the Utah Jazz. As of right now, it's the Sacramento Kings and the Dallas Mavericks. And I think if you were to ask me to choose a single elimination winner, Against Utah, I'm, I'm taking either one of those teams. I don't think Utah has the guy that can go out and get you the game. And that's the one thing that's holding them back. I think Lowry Markkinen, great player, all-star player. He's not a number one guy. And I, when you look at Sacramento, you look at Dallas, you look at Phoenix, you look at New Orleans, they all just have a guy who can go get you a bucket. And, and that's what matters the most come single elimination time. So great story, good team, going to make the play in. They're not making the playoffs. Okay. Uh, to start the discussion, I want to throw something out there. Uh, do you guys think the Utah Jazz should be buyers at the trade deadline? And if so, would that change your opinion, Dave? It's an interesting question. I don't think they will be, uh, but I don't, also don't think they're going to be sellers. I mean, Zach, you know how Danny Ainge operates. I mean, he has a treasure trove of draft assets. He's got a bunch of good young players, but they don't have to be bad because of those draft picks. They're they're not gonna be they're not gonna be sellers for sure because there is nothing Danny Ainge loves more 
than the day after the trade deadline to tell you <laughs> what he was about to almost do. Almost did this. Almost did this. Almost did that. It worked like a charm in Boston. It'll absolutely work in Utah. It's his favorite thing to do. He li- he loves that more than he loves watching baseball or watching basketball, playing with his kids, winning championships. He loves nothing more than to tell you what he almost did. The day after the trade deadline really is Danny Ainge's favorite day. So oh, yeah, it's that, his holiday. It's his not, it's his day. I think that they're gonna stand pat. I mean, it makes sense too. Like if you think about the development curve of this team, like this is not a championship team. We know that. I do think being good is important in Utah. And and so making the play in or you know, getting to the playoffs, it's, I mean, that's super important for this team. Like, I think they're a new owner. I think they're buyers this summer. Um mm-hmm. I don't think they're going to do the full teardown. I think we're we're pretty pretty clear on that at this point Mm -hmm. i don't think they need to make a move at the deadline i think this team has found its stride there's absolutely no reason for them to move i completely disagree with dave on larry markinen not being that guy that dude's a bucket that dude is a walking bucket who you can't you just can't stop him there's nothing you can do he's seven feet he can shoot he can put on the floor they have actually a bunch of guys that can go get that bucket jordan clarkson Colin Sexton like they have all the weapons they need they have the defensive components the biggest thing that they have is not Taylor Horton Tucker in the rotation and that is the reason <laughs> like they don't need to make any moves massive the, the, it's funny how when you look at the DNP CDs that he started catching uh the winning streak starts all of a right sudden in the middle yeah. of that they all of a out, sudden you know Colin it's like Sexton, it's the equivalent the way, of like so good. oh yeah he's yeah. I mean he's excellent like it, it's the equivalent of when uh when teams used to trade Rady, uh, Rudy Gay away and then all of a sudden would just like get better. Like yeah. it's like, Hey, they traded the super talented guy and got way better after that's a, That's what benching oh, Taylor Horton Tucker's done. Taylor Horton Tucker. I wouldn't call it super talented. I think wh- one of the big problems was this idea that he was going to be the point guard, you know, and, and he's so clearly not that guy. And Colin Sexton just being, you know, average as far as a, a lead ball handler goes in, in the decision-making aspect and being lights out shooting the ball has help this team immensely i actually Uh, think it's a brilliant strategy by will hardy at the beginning of the season like talon's our our point guard because he looked at chris dunn he looked at keontae george he looked at colin sex and said you can't beat that guy out for for to be my lead guard i guess you're just not that good and what happened they're all better than him oh yeah big time yeah it was i mean again will hardy is i think will hardy is going to be in the coach of the year conversation it's likely not going to be him it's probably going to be mark dagnall that that winds up winning but I think that he'll get a bunch of votes uh, again. I don't know a whole lot of uh, playing tournament coaches one and done that are in the coach of the year conversation. So maybe Dave just argued against himself. I don't know. I'm I'm not the judge here. I'm not the one giving out points. I'm just saying regular season award, Mr. Harper, as you know, you're an award. But you you don't, you don't, you don't give it to teams that have no shot at making the playoffs. This isn't Doc Rivers in 2000. I do think making the play in with, with this team and with the expectations, that's a significant, thing for them um but you know losing a single elimination game nothing wrong with that you know i mean also you talk about about. the pelicans yeah they'll be healthy uh the kings yeah they have a great success track record uh the the mavericks they never are one and done i will tell you one other thing that i worry about and and this is not about utah it's about everybody else is if those other teams are going to bolster their roster here at the trade deadline like you could see an instance where like the lakers are significantly better in, in like three weeks now they happen to pull this off every year. If they pulled off this year. I wouldn't be surprised. And you could just get not leapfrogging, but just it's going to be a harder road for, for Utah. I, I think we are doing nothing but playing the resume of the Lakers and the Warriors at this point. These teams are done. Tell, are well, the good. Warriors are cooked. I don't even think the Warriors and, and, you know, fine. This year has kind of been awful, especially like recently. And I think the Warriors this year, that, that season is just over. We talk about Taylor Horton Tucker getting out of the rotation. Christian Wood is still very much in the Lakers rotation. Is Christian Wood like he's not the worst player in the league? No, Isaiah. But Livers. he's in the is he in the bottom ten? Isaiah Livers and Killian Hayes still exist, so those guys are. Those, I mean, those like pick a pick a piston or a former piston. Like it's it's in that conversation. God, rough. Zach, Christian Zach, Wood, I, former piston. I, Zach, I have a question for you based yeah. on what what Dave is saying. So currently ahead of the Jazz, seven, eight, and nine, we have the Kings, the Mavs, and the Lakers in that order. Mm-hmm. Let's say all three of them at the trade deadline, they make some sort of deal to get at least marginally better. Does that change the way you feel about the Jazz? Because the Jazz would then have to be better than at least two of those three teams. No, because I think I don't think the Kings can make a move that fixes their defense. Right? The Mavs 
probably end up in the top six. Like I, I think that as, as long as they're healthy, like I think they'll end up in the top six. Um, the, the, the lake, I, what, what are they going to, they're going to trade for DeJounte Murray and everything's going to be fixed. They're going to trade for Zach Levine and everything's going to be fixed. Like I just, they, they can't shoot and their defense is kind of like a Potemkin village to me. Like, it's like, yeah, like it can be good, but when you're also like, shoot, Cam Reddish is hurt. Like, what are we talking about? You know, right. like I just, I don't think those teams are going to make realistic moves that put them outright ahead of these guys. And I, again, like, I think the jazz have figured out what the rotation is for 48 minutes. And it's, it's really, really impressive. I, I will say, I, I think that that's probably the nine ten matchup is, is Lakers jazz. It just feels like when you look at the standings right now, they feel kind of set aside from five to seven. I, I yeah. think you could have anywhere new Orleans, Phoenix, Sacramento, Dallas is going to be your combination of, of five through, through the eight seed. Yeah. Um, I like all of those teams in one game over Utah at full health, but this is, and this is where I'm going to give you credit, Zach, is that you are right. The track record for these teams on health, not been great. It has not been great. So a lot of this relies on every, you know, these teams staying healthy, but this is every single season. But if, if the rosters are full, everyone's healthy. I I'd take all four of those teams over Utah. Not that Utah can't win a game. It is basketball. And what, they are a good team, but I, I take them all. What's great for body recovery? Epsom salt bath, right? Just fantastic. <laughs> what is in that great lake just outside of Salt Lake City? Is it Epsom Raw salt? Sewer. I don't know. I just know it's salt. And so <laughs> maybe, maybe it's good for the body there. Maybe it's built in. I mean, I look, you've got the elevation advantage. It is a disgusting uh, if you little can beach get area, into by the way. The just gnats and Looks flies gross. everywhere. It's so gross. I, look, man, Utah, like Salt Lake City, beautiful city. Amazing. Beautiful city. Incredibly yeah. walkable. Some of the worst air quality in the country it's it bad. is that really inversion sad. i didn't know about inversion until then the yeah. cold air traps that smog and that's why when they go to la to play when they go to sacramento to play when they go to dallas playing this play-in tournament their lungs are going to be fortified <laughs> it's like oh my god like the smog of la they're like what is this this is nothing they basically they've been training at elevation mm-hmm. in harsh conditions they're they're rocky going up against Ivan Drago. Like, yeah, you've been doing all this high-tech training. Rockies in the mountains moving logs and wagons. You know, and I don't know, Dave, are, are you pro USA or pro he's, he's, Soviet he's, Union? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's an interesting That's a different show. Yeah. That. Uh, but Zach, I got one last question and then I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give some points on this. All right. Um, you mentioned Dave, you know, maybe he's arguing again against himself with the coach of the year debate. Mm-hmm. Zach, you are a voter. Let's yeah. say the season ended today. Who gets your coach of the year vote? Adrian Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, it'd be Mark Digby. Like I think, I think he's the guy. Like, okay, that, so that team's super impressive. So that being said, then Zach, you get a point for the the Salt Lake City reference. I thought that was fun, but you're getting that point subtracted because what? <laughs> you can't just say that Dave is arguing against himself and then not stand on your business. I'm sorry, I will not have my vote tarnished. <laughs> or bought well, that's fine or you're coerced by outside attitude, forces you can believe well, hang on it depends on what kind of stuff they're sending you right i mean you honestly know, like, give some of these me teams send some bucks. really good packages of like, i got a, i actually got a promo dope, material i got a dope like king's lunchbox with D- De'Aaron fox and uh demonta sabonis on it granted they sent it to me after the voting for <laughs> all-star closed but like it's pretty cool man Nice. Uh, the, the I, Jazz sent I, me playing cards. You which, get a Will uh, Hardy like, like fat yeah. head for for my wall yeah. right here. Yeah. Utah, you know anybody yeah. from the Jazz organization? I'll hang a Will He'll Hardy take fat it, man. head. I, yeah. We're we're you know I need a coach jersey. You give me Is like a, a team issued quarter zip. Yeah. <laughs> you give me a, a Danny Ainge at a press conference day after trade deadline oh, fat head. That's on the ceiling, I, man. Give me a coffee mug with his photo. At mm-hmm. the press conference, uh, mm-hmm. you know, put maybe put a little star behind it. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, I'm into that. All right. Second take, guys. Laurie Markkinen and Colin Sexton can be the second and third best player on a championship team. Zach, 60 seconds begins now. It's obviously correct. This is this is I mean, Larry Markkinen is a number one on a team that is going to challenge the one seed and push them to seven games. So this is easily you move him to the number two on the hierarchy. Oh my God! It, it's it's like you moved certain years of Dirk Nowitzki into the into the number two slot. Like th- this is that's a no brainer. Here's the thing about Colin Sexton: he was this scorer in Cleveland. 
came to Utah, took a little bit of, of a dip, but became a better all-around player. So now you move him into the third best player. This is how good Colin Sexton is, okay? And this is really important. The Utah Jazz social media put out a highlight of him about two weeks ago in which they mention him in the highlight, they mention his nickname, Young Bull, and then they put the horny emoji in there. That little purple devil face horny emoji. You is type that what in, that is? you type in horny. That thing's popping up on your phone. Like it, the, the phone, time, all, iPhone time, already knows. Time, time, You can't finish the rest of your story, Dave. Your sixty seconds begins now. I, I, I honestly didn't know that was the horny emoji, but uh, I will say this: Lowry Marketing would be uh, number two on a championship team. I, I do think he's that level of player, and I agree with everything he said about being a number one on this pretty good team. Colin Sexton, I don't think is number three guy on the championship team. He's a very good player, and especially offensively. But I think your third best guy has to be a, a more of a two-way guy. And I think Zach would probably agree with me if we weren't doing this particular exercise. You need a guy who can defend more. Lowry, he holds up. He does okay. Um, Colin Sexton dies on screens. I mean, it's still going to be an issue for him. Part of him is just physical. He's a little bit too small. And we know small guards in the playoffs, that becomes a problem. He'd be picked on. So I think your number three's got to be a little bit more robust, especially if he's a small guard. He's got to be able to defend better. But, I mean, I, I like Colin Sexton as a player. I think he's your fourth guy. Man, that's a great fourth guy. Fifth guy, even time, better. Time, time. All right. To uh, start this debate, Dave, I, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Are you saying there is nobody in the association that you could pair with these two players where, oh, you feel comfortable seeing them in the NBA Finals. Okay, see, now that's different. That's a different question. Okay. Because I could pair them maybe with Jokic, which I think is going to be argued here soon, and it might not matter that Colin Sexton isn't that good of a defender. It, it really depends on the other couple guys. So if Colin Sexton is your third best player and your best player is Jokic, I, I don't even think Giannis. Um, I think it Jokic because Colin Sexton can play off of him and his passing. Embiid, maybe, you know, although his playoff failures, we we know quite well. If it's Jokic, yes. Yes. That's it. They could win Jokic. a title. There's nobody yeah, else. I mean, it, it, it gets to the point where you need to pair him, in my opinion, with a hub, a, an A1 hub who can play both ways. And that's Jokic. And there really isn't anybody else. I mean, Embiid, yes, I would put him just below Jokic as a guy I would trust in that situation. Um, but otherwise, if it's like, even if it's Giannis, I think you, your third guy needs to be a, a, a high-end playmaker who can I, guard. I could not disagree more. You, I can name five guys. Name, name them. them. Jokic for one. Absolutely solves all of Embiid's issues in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler. Dude just produces finals appearances. Kawhi Leonard, healthy Kawhi Leonard. That like you're you're marching through. And then here's one: How much firepower have we seen around Steph Curry, where it's unstoppable? You put Steph on that on that team. You put those two guys around Steph instead of whatever Clay Thompson is now, whatever Andrew Wiggins is now. That team is elevated to being a title contender instantly. I don't think Colin Sexton is seeing the court with Steph Curry very often. Jordan Poole he did. Can't, he can't guard enough. Jordan he can't Poole. guard enough. And, he won a well, title with Jordan Poole. With Andrew Wiggins and with Draymond Green and with Kavon Looney playing defense behind those guys. And unfortunately, Utah doesn't have, like Utah in particular doesn't have those guys. So you would have to stack your team Walker to be Kessler, able to have that, right? Great rim protector already. Mm -hmm. Like needs to learn a bunch, but great rim protector. Yeah. Uh, Chris Dunn. Phenomenal defender, mm -hmm. very disruptive. Two zeros on offense. I mean, this is just, you're never going to build a perfect team if Colin Sexton is your third best player. And not yeah. that any team has got to be perfect to win a title. We know that. I mean, we haven't but seen Kevon Looney Sexton's do anything on offense since high school, but yeah. That's... Dude, Kevon Looney fell off a cliff and it's very unfortunate for me. I've been sad all year about it. Uh, but yeah, I think Colin Sexton is a, is a very nice player, but third on a title team, it would be a bit much. I mean, you know, I mean, just think about some of the third guys on... Uh, Chris Middleton was the third guy, uh, you know, in my my opinion, because I, mm -hmm. I think I'd rank Drew higher than him. But Chris Middleton, I mean, that's an all star. I mean, is is Colin Sexton going to make any all stars in his career? Yeah, but you played Chris Paul. You know, kind of destined to win if you're going to play Chris Paul in a playoff series. 
played Monty Williams. You know, if anyone's gonna out, if anyone can out coach Monty out-coach. Williams in the playoffs, it's Mike Budenholzer. You know, <laughs> the flawed, flawed situation. Do you guys think there's a world where Lowry Markkinen could be the number one on a championship team, or does he have to be the two? Are we talking think, number one player, number one option? Like, because like um, number like, number one overall player in a world. Okay, um, it's hard. You can't win a title without a top six or seven guy. I don't. Yeah, think. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because even if you put him with like Bam out of bio, right? Super talented, does everything on both ends of the floor. Is that enough to raise? Because if you were talking like just like number one option, I mean, and this is kind of like a cheat answer. I was like, well, like think about like if Dwight Howard in his prime is on that team, he's not the number one option, but but then again, like he's the number one player, right? right? Obviously, so yeah. no, I don't, I don't think he could be, but I think he's, I actually think he's kind of like knocking on the door. You know, I I, I don't know if he's ever gonna kick that door open, but I I think he's like. He's Larry he Mark like, is really like a, good. He's he's so I mean, good. he's so he's so good. I, I try to think about I mean, you know, Seth Part now obviously does the tears for us. Yeah. And you know, we we talk a lot in that sort of range. He's got himself in, I think he's like a tier two guy, right? Yeah. Like not not a number one. I think he's a number two in his best role today. This doesn't mean that two years yeah. from now he's not a number one. When you look at how he's progressed and the biggest thing for me is his body. Like he's just done so much work to his body. He did that that time in the Finnish Army. Mm-hmm. I thought I think he lost a little bit too much weight there, but he put it back on pretty fast. He looks so lean and strong. Yeah. Um, I'm with you. I think he could potentially be a number one offensive option, right? It, 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 but yeah. I don't think that he can be your best player. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's accurate. Yeah, like we call a lot of plays for him. But right. our best player is, you know, whoever. I, I think right. that that's – and that's what Utah – this is what Utah's entire game plan is is at this point. Like, they, they struck gold with Lowry. Colin Sexton's on a pretty good contract when you look at how productive he is. Mm-hmm. Um, these guys are on – deal. I mean, Lowry's going to get a, a new deal here soon, but these guys are on affordable contracts. They have so many assets. If someone is disgruntled, Danny Ainge could make a pitch to them Mm-hmm. Say, hey, look, man, give us a year, give us two, maybe we could win a title, and and we'll take care of you. But also, I mean, you and Zach, you you lived in Salt Lake, you attended games. I mean, you know how they are there. I mean, there's a there's a good chance that the next, you know, the top of the West here in the next few years is like OKC, Minnesota, Utah, you know, San Antonio. Dallas, right, San Antonio, yeah. and it's these smaller markets. But the pitch to them is. First of all, the NBA markets you throughout the world. You don't have to think about, oh, I got a weird thumbs up there. Uh, thanks, Apple. Uh, <laughs> you, yeah. That was weird. Uh, but they, we're going to market you around the world. So market doesn't matter. But what does matter is your local market. And you can be a legend here. And mm-hmm. Utah, they'll do it. Hey, come on. You know, you're a top top 10 player. You're going to have a max contract for the rest of the time you're here. We're going to make sure you have a five-star experience. Also, and you're going to play with Lowry Marketing. You're in a Delta hub. Easy to get out of town if you want to go travel. It's true. It's a mm-hmm. short flight to LA. Short, short flight to LA. Beautiful hiking, not not far away too. Dave, we're trying to get hired by the Utah Jazz. We're we're going to be the. <laughs> Let us make I'm, your. Free I'm pretty agent sure pitch. the Jazz won't hire me at this point. I'm pretty. Sure, I'm pretty sure my resume is <laughs> Dave, established. You are getting a negative point. Because you just argued against yourself. Too complimentary. Deserve. At, at the very beginning, you said if Jokic is the one, then they they'd be championship contenders. Mm-hmm. Which means well, Zach, that's you correct. have Jokic. Yes, but the, no, the, no, 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 no. The issue is Colin Sexton is your third best player. You have to have Jokic. So it's like you got well, Jokic and Lowry. You got Jokic and Lowry. You could have us as your as your yeah, third I mean, best player. That's, getting, that's, yeah. what, that's the point. But, it's, it's that still about... answers the question, though. That's that. That still supports. The... So Dave, well, I just can't be dishonest. I, you know what? If it if it costs me points, yeah, I'd rather be honest. It's, it's, it's okay. You could, you could still come back, but with a score of negative one, negative one, negative one to one. Heading into the final prom. If Nikola Jokic was on the Utah Jazz, they would be better than the current Denver Nuggets team with Jokic. So, Zach, your 60 seconds begins now. Unquestionably yes. Unquestionably yes. Let's go down the list, all right? One, Jokic is going to be Jokic. Best player in the league, right? So that's that's unquestionable. 
two, Larry Markkinen, great scorer, serves his country, military man, versus Aaron Gordon, complains about losing the dunk contest. Michael Porter Jr., anti-vaxxer, right? <laughs> Simone Fontecchio, world traveler, not afraid of, of regulations and travel tips. Contavious Caldwell Pope, really nice player, think he fits in anywhere. Colin Sexton, just scores better, more reliable shooter, more reliable with the ball in his hands. And then the point guard position, Jamal Murray, I don't know, seems like he gets hurt a lot, you know? Give me Chris Dunn, give me Keontae George, give me those guys playing off Jokic. What could Jokic turn those guys into? Jamal Murray, not even, not even an all-star. This dude can't make an all-star team. He can't make an all-NBA. He's bumping up Jokic's stats left and right because Jokic is like, hey, he's never played with an all-star, never played with an all-NBA guy. And look how good he is. Time, now you're putting time, all-NBA. Time, time. Uh, Dave, before you go, Zach, I don't know if you know this, but I'm an Orlando Magic fan, and Aaron mm-hmm. Gordon – Thoroughly deserved those dunk contest awards. And so you're getting subtracted a point. I'm so sorry that you were forced to buy into a Vucevic Fournier Gordon team. Doesn't I'm matter. Sorry. You're getting subtracted a point. So Dave, you, you you have a chance to tie this. Dave, your 60 seconds begins now. I mean, listen, I think the most important thing to remember here is that the Denver Nuggets just won a title and a playoff run in which they were extremely dominant. And that dominance has continued. That, that's the story here, is that the Denver Nuggets, as constructed, it's as close to a perfect team as exists right now in the NBA. They are by far the best team in the league. Removing Jokic makes them a lot worse because he's the best player in the world. And it would make Utah uh, much better by adding him. But I think that when you go down the roster, the quality of player, it's just not the same head to head, no matter what Zach says. And I understand the off the court stuff. You got to take that into account when you think about the locker room. I don't think about that stuff. I'm just thinking about the on-court product. Jamal Murray is uh, a little bit of a clone of Steph Curry in the way that he plays off the ball around Jokic. It's a perfect mix. And his handle is so much better than Colin Sexton. His ability to get to the basket. I mean, I just think he's a perfect sidekick. Number two guy next to Jokic. Whereas I don't think Colin Sexton could be the third. Uh, I'm going to take this one step further to start this discussion, but... Do you think the Utah Jazz are better set up for the future than the Denver Nuggets? Or is Jokic just that good where the Nuggets are, they'll, they'll well, be better for a long time? It, let, me, let, let me start here. So I would say this. The Utah Jazz are slightly younger. I think that their, their window, or as we call it on Nerder, the hallway, the door is not quite open yet. Like they haven't started this. Mm-hmm. We're pushing for top four in the West. You know, they're just not there. It's different phase of team building. Whereas... The Nuggets, they've been building now for five or six years. You know, yeah. this is this is a lot of continuity that's causing them to be so good. I mean, this is same coach, same core players that you've had throughout this entire run. I think that that's something. And Zach, like, we don't see it often, number one, but you can't replicate it. Right. It's tough to do. Um, I would say this, like, the Jazz are way deeper uh, in terms of rotation. Um, I do think their weapons would complement Jokic just as well as what Denver has um, very different ways, but just as well, this jazz team is trying to lose and they're 500. So now you put the best player in the world on the team. And that seems pretty good to me. Like you're Denver is developing their bench and the end of their rotation, but it still has like a lot of like, we don't know if this guy's going to be good tonight. Whereas you throw in, you know, you're talking like Jordan Clarkson off the bench. You're talking, you're, you're talking, you know, real role players who are already established. You know, I don't know if that means like Kelly Olynyk in this world is now the backup center, but whatever, like, or Walker Kessler is yeah. like the full-time backup center. But like, there's so much depth there that isn't either an old guy at the end of his rope, like, like DeAndre Jordan or young guys who are trying to be good. Like Christian Braun. I will never call him Christian Brown. Your name is spelled Braun. And you know, like Peyton Watson, really nice, encouraging young player. They've got some guys like Strother and everything, but those guys aren't, completely reliable yet mm-hmm. i'm with you on the depth and i i do think that uh regular season like you add Jokic to this team they're a home court advantage team in the playoffs but once you get to the playoffs that's when everything sorts sorts yeah. itself out you know and, and those players like you've got lowry and you've got Jokic, and i know i kind of know what they would do it's the other yeah. guys um it, you shorten that rotation like you trust jordan clarkson in the playoffs playing off of Jokic, yeah for sure sure yeah, I, I would say I would say Jordan Clarkson and Jamal Murray are closer than Jamal Murray and Steph Curry in terms of what they would be next to Jokic. Next to Jokic. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I happen to disagree. 
Um, but I, I think part of that is just because Murray is a three level scorer, and mm-hmm. and I don't think that Jordan Clarkson is. This is oh, where I think, Murray. I think Clarkson. You can absolutely. run Murray. I mean, and Clarkson for sure will will absolutely run an offense by himself. I think you run better offense with Murray. Um, but I do like Utah's depth. I think that you're right about that. Like this is going to be a thing that that sorts itself out for for Denver come playoff time. We'll we'll find out if they're as good as last year um, in the playoffs there, once, there's once these young guys have to play. Something Dave said that I want to push back on. He said like obviously Denver is the number one team here. I don't know. They have a lower win percentage than the Minnesota Timberwolves who've never come close to a championship. So I you know you. Calling them number one team, they have a low win percentage, and then a team that's definitely worse that just lost the Hornets <laughs> with a guy going for sixty two. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. You know, I don't. I don't know if that's. Uh, I don't know if that's accurate. I mean, I, I do think that there's a little bit of sleepwalking through the regular yeah. season here for the for the Nuggets. They seem Game awake feels enough. easy for them when they when they turn it on. Awake but, enough to beat out the the Timberwolves. If if Jokic was on this current Utah Jazz team, would you lock them in as final favorites? Or I wouldn't. I would I would lock them in. I would lock them into the second round of the playoffs. I think. No man, it, they're, I they're, think it's. I, I, I don't think, think they, they stop it. I don't think. I mean, because Jokic, Jokic is just like. It's it's I, hard to describe. I I didn't I didn't watch Wilt. I didn't. You know what I mean? But it feels like that. Uh, the way that he's described in the and the clips you see, yeah. it feels like like the way he just it, it's just he's unguardable. I, I don't I, know. I, 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 it's hard for me to to count him out. Let's just put it that way. The way he plays and the way he is right now, it would be hard for me to count him out. I don't think that they make. I think I don't they're think they absolutely make... the best team in the West. Um, I'd have some questions about who they play in the finals, but in terms of getting through the West, like, yeah, like that. This, I mean, the Jazz team is is already really good after a bad start, and now you're telling me the best player in the world is on that yeah. team. But like back, that's a title contender. But to back to the to the prompt. If you were asking me to take the Jazz with Jokic versus the Jazz or the Nuggets with Jokic, I'm taking the Nuggets. I'm t- I'm taking the Jazz just simply because, yeah, you're right. Like when we get to the playoffs, depth it it matters, it matters less much. unless there are injuries. Denver, I don't think could sustain injuries. The Jazz with Jokic could sustain injuries and still maintain their level of play. I mean, it's possible. I will say that we've seen Jokic by himself sustain injuries and make run, you know, playoff mm-hmm. runs without MPJ, without Jamal Murray. Uh, you know, but not, you are going to run into a wall at a certain point because you need other guys. But this is, but this is my point about Utah. I I have their guys ranked lower than a lot of the guys in the Nuggets. I think you know one for one or whatever, however you want to look at it. And then there's the continuity aspect, which I, we we can't yeah. even use that here because that's not fair. But I think I that. Think- they're think, they're just gonna be better at the higher end, even even if they lost a guy or two. Um, because like by the same token, Utah could easily lose a guy. Guys get hurt all the time. I guess it kind of the Utah team kind of reminds me of two things. One, like remember like the 95 magic and how deep they were, and then you go to like the 2009 magic and how deep they were. Mm-hmm. Like it it just reminds me a lot of that in terms of sustaining that. But they and, don't have a Hito Turkulu to to be out there like making things happen. And, and frankly, Dwight Howard and his defense was so important. Oh, for in, sure. In that, right? For and sure. They wouldn't have like Jokic is a good defender, but he's not a alter every single game plan for the opposing team defender like Dwight Howard was. Sure. But you still have like dominant center mm-hmm. with a bunch of depth. See, I think it's more a little bit more like I compare Utah to the Tampa Bay Rays. Like I, I just think they've got a lot of really good guys. Right, who do their yeah, but, job, role players, but no guys that are going to help. Like you're not saying, "Oh man, here's our three, four, and five hitter." If you get Jokic, hey, we got our three hitter, but who's going to hit fourth? Oh, probably Lowry marketing. Well, who's our fifth hitter? No, Colin Sexton's probably lead off guy. I think He's you're disrespecting second. Evan Longoria, who is an all time great. Like I, I just don't. I don't know. Like I, I, I'm old enough to remember. Like, like you have, you have Utah maybe make a trade for a veteran to come. I'm old enough to remember Wade Boggs on the Rays and how just what how much that set that franchise forward in knowing that like someday this team's gonna be a problem. I think look Colin Sexton could definitely be like a Carlos Pena for, for this team. <laughs> I just uh, like I th- uh, I th- <laughs> Zach, you don't know this, but uh, Dave already knows the Tampa Bay Rays are my favorite team, and so Dave, oh, I figured that oh, out real knows. quick when he Dave's randomly brought that up. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to kiss ass with that comment. 
<laughs> I think it's shameful. I think it's shameful. I think it's as shameful as all the times the Rays Orlando have been cheated Magic. in the postseason. You know? That oh. 95 Orlando Magic team, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Zach, you get a minus one for that, too. You can't be, <laughs> what? Up here. You can't be kissing ass up here. <laughs> Listen, pandering is literally the name That's of what the he game. just did. It's, 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 he he pandered into two sports. Yeah, yeah, I you have both lost points. Okay, all right. One final question, and we'll end with this. Um. <laughs> it, let's say that we live in a world where Jokic does not exist. Mm-hmm. Um, which team, the, the the current Denver Nuggets or the current Utah Jazz, would you rather have for this season and for the next three seasons? Oh, with no Jokic? With no Jokic. There's a world without Jokic. I mean, I don't see how the I don't see how Denver is even a definite playoff team. Uh, it, right. Jokic. It depends on who you're replacing him with. If yeah. You're saying, like, like, I mean, league average center. No replace. Yeah. You're just like league. Yeah. League yeah. average center. Uh, for for both. Like for like. For or, like let's say like. I mean, well, maybe he's not league average. Like, but I was thinking like, all right. So now like Kelly Olynyk is their starting center. Yeah. I you mean, know if you want to make I things fair. A but... way to look at it is like this. Um, because it, it's hard to say what does it look like on the court, but like which, and I I'm also not an asset head, so please excuse me for this, but like which players do you like better you know what i mean like do you do you would you start with this team and add pieces to it or this team and add pieces to it i mean both are are you know imperfect i guess that's my question like, yeah what, would you rather take? For, for me i think today the the denver nuggets and part of this again is the aging curve right these guys are you know like murray is entering his prime gordon's in his prime mpj is coming into his prime and it's just a little bit further along in the process for some of them um so I tend to lean toward them. I, I just think the higher end talent is a little higher end. The starters are better than they are in Utah. But yeah, Utah I guess like are you assets. are you are you plugging in a center who may like who can kind of do it all? You know, right. a Ben Zobris, a Carl Crawford type of athlete <laughs> who can just do whatever. <laughs> I'm just talking about the type of athlete. Those are just guys that come to mind when I'm thinking yeah. of like complete athlete. You know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like Hedo Turkoglu, just um, yeah, really can just Swiss Army knife type guy. Just a, or or like a just a solid veteran presence that you trust with your life, like a Jameer, Jameer Nelson. Nelson. Yeah, right. Same yeah, yeah. Too, yeah, yeah. You got me. You got Zach, me. Which one, if you had to make a decision though, which which roster would you rather start with? Um, with no Jokic, no Jokic, the Jazz. I just think there's more there, like. I could see the Nuggets with their young guys because I do like a lot of their young guys. They're just not. I can't be definite that they're going to be something. Whereas with the Jazz, seven eight dudes in that rotation, where I'm like, yeah, give me like give me that guy on my team. I I just think that the the Nuggets have more guys that I can look at and say, oh yeah, that's that's a dude. I also not just, just don't I don't believe in as much as Denver media is trying to lead us towards this. I don't think Michael Porter Jr. is that guy. I think he's a nice role player who has got a great agent to get him that contract. He's in a perfect spot, no matter. Yeah, what, like you right? put him in a lot of other situations, uh, and and, and not even just the medical stuff, like with him, right. where like his, you know, there's some real questions. I mean, he was <laughs> he was gonna be the number two pick. Mm-hmm. Granted, it was by the Kings, but like the Kings were going to take him number two before the injury stuff with they looked at the medicals. They're just like, all right, we, we can't trust yeah. the number two pick with this. We'll, we'll go and then the, the family like, history, right? Like when yeah. you look like his sister, his brother yeah. has had huge injury. Yeah. It and does so, seem I, like, I think though, you put him in a different situation where there's more pressure on him to be a right. guy and he's got to play more. And I, I think it probably crumbles, but I do think that Denver did a good job of protecting him. Phenomenal right? job. They and, handled it as well as, as you could handle it. And he looks healthy, right? Like he looks like whatever the back issue was where he had the surgery looks like yeah. he's not bothering him. And you're right. Like playing next to Jokic, like what a luxury. It's oh like Clay God. Thompson. Like what, what would Clay Thompson look like if he didn't have Steph Curry? I don't know. I think that it, I've always thought he would look like Reggie bit, Miller. Well, maybe a little bit like Michael Porter Jr. Right? Like <sighs> Michael Porter Jr. is like a 6'10 Clay Thompson offensive type he doesn't want to pass this is one of the things that's been yeah. so amazing about him this season is that you can like there's so many shots where i'm like oh he's gonna force it and he throws a pass and i'm like Whoa! every pass but every pass comes with a sigh so it, like he, he just uh, just begrudgingly like just uh, yeah. i guess but, i can move the ball here but his it, part of that is also though these guys like he's such a smart cutter yeah that, that when he throws a pass he now cuts off the right. pass and so he's getting a bucket out of it so i, I just think that his growth has been uh pretty impressive and, and it doesn't happen without Jokic. 
But to say you take Jokic away and all that growth is gone, that's a little harsh. I I do think he's a pretty good player. And I think he's a good, I, I think we, I think I think he's a really good talent, but it doesn't always translate into a really good fair. player. And it, well, this is where the team context yeah. just matters so much. You know, the yeah. fact that he is they the have third forced option. him into a role where like you right. this is how you have to play. And he can Could, do that because he's so talented. I mean, he there's a there's a world in which he's Kyle Kuzma and he's you know the best player on an awful team, and he's 25 a night on a 25 win team, but here it, it, he is bought into being 15 to 18 a night on a 52 55 win team. I think that that's mentally that tells me a lot about about who he is. You, there's you don't a, hear, there's no squeaking wheels. There is a world where he does get drafted by the Kings number 2 and he is and currently he's... dominating Turkey. Like just <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, okay. him and Shingun would be Him and Shingun, oh my god. He... <laughs> if we can if, can we naturalize MPJ? Can the Turkish government naturalize him like Shane Larkin? <laughs> he Add should. him like, to the look, national he's team. Never, he's never he's never making USA. Look, like... man, we keep calling Shingun baby Jokic. Mm-hmm. Let's see it uh in some international competition. Yeah. That that's actually, you know, that's the next step. All these uh all these teams, Jokic can be like, hey, Aaron Gordon, come be you, Serbian. You feel, you feel pretty Serbian to me? Come be Serbian. <laughs> yeah. Come be Serbian and win, and win an Olympic gold yeah. medal. And obviously we've Ooh. mentioned Turkey. That's where NBA legend Hito Turkoglu is from. Hito Turkoglu, yeah. <laughs> uh, if my numbers are correct, the score currently is negative two to negative one. Zach is up. Wow. <laughs> Before I give my final points, and I will just say... It's a real Pistons Hornets game. (laughs) (laughs) I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. And so for the first time in Defend the Take history, I'm going to give zero points and Zach's going to win by a negative score. We will have a negative score winner by score negative one to negative two. And by the way, the best episode that we've done yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Excuse excuse my language if you need to bleep this. Eat shit, J. King. We'll have Jay back next week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jay Jay is going to get back in here. We'll come up with something for me to argue. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let us know down in the comments who won this debate. It's never Dave because he just is not a true <laughs> Tampa Bay Rays fan. <laughs>